Defense Secretary James Mattis handed in his resignation letter to President Trump Thursday afternoon, setting shockwaves through Washington. Mattis's announcement comes after President Trump's decision this week to pull U.S. troops out of Syria and to reduce our presence in Afghanistan. In the letter, Mattis cites that his disagreements with the president over foreign policy led to his resignation, writing that he has the right to, quote, have a secretary of defense whose views are better aligned with yours. For more, I'm joined now by Pentagon correspondent for foreign policy, Lara Seligman, who joins me from Washington. So, Lara, there's been this bipartisan concern that came out right away when he announced he was leaving. At this point, you know, you wrote a story talking about with Mattis gone, is Trump unleashed? Will he be unleashed in the area of foreign policy? So Syria, the decision on Syria was the very last straw for Secretary Mattis. Um, I am told, but although his he is has actually been considering resigning for several months. Um, there have been several glaring differences between Trump and Secretary Mattis over the last six months. Uh, these differences has steadily been increasing, the most glaring of which is uh, the Trump's decision to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. That certainly rubbed the secretary the wrong way. Um, I'm told that it was after the decision to cancel the exercises with South Korea last summer, Secretary Mattis actually began drafting the first version of this resignation letter. So that was also something that the two disagreed on. Um, among other things, the creation of the Space Force also rubbed Mattis the wrong way, as Mattis had previously come out against creating a Space Force. The Most recently, um, the Trump's decision to tap um, Army Chief of Staff General Mark Milley as the replacement for General Dunford as Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff over Mattis's preference, which would have been the Air Force Chief of Staff David Goldfein. That was something that also um, made Mattis a little unhappy as well. Uh, nevertheless, despite the signs, this did come as quite a shock to the national security community as well as many in the Pentagon. Um, Mattis has, in, has consistently insisted that he was not going to resign. The only way that he would be leaving is that if he was fired. So mm. this is quite the shock. Yeah, no, it certainly was a shock. But at the same time, Larry, you know, if you listen to President Trump just on the campaign trail, he has said he's wanted to pull out of Syria. He has said he's wanted to pull out of Afghanistan. And he said that he wants to make that campaign promise despite the uproar in the national security community. Is there anybody at the Pentagon that feels that they'll be able to counter the commander in chief at this point? I don't think so. With with Mattis out, Mattis has long been perceived as the person that was standing in between Trump and some of his more extreme impulses. There have been reports that Mattis has been the person to slow roll um, many decisions and as extreme as assassinating uh, Syrian President uh, Bashar al-Assad that came out of uh, Bob Woodward's book most recently. Uh, and um, most importantly, Mattis has been a key reassuring figure for our allies, particularly in Europe, um, NATO, um, and in the Middle East as well. So with Mattis gone, it's unclear that there is anyone in the Pentagon who is acting as the adult in the room. Mm. Um, now, now, that said, Mattis, like I said, has been losing influence with Trump over the last six or so months. And as, as we've seen over the last 24 hours, Trump has decided to pull out of Syria. He's decided to pull troops out of Afghanistan, all against the advice of his secretary. Mm -hmm. So it's unclear whether Mattis had that much influence anyway at the end. You know, earlier this fall, you wrote a story about possible replacements for Mattis. I'm curious, are those names still the same? What are you hearing? There are actually a few different names that have been are being floated most recently. Uh, the person that I'm hearing is at the top of the shortlist, the White House's shortlist, is Deputy Secretary of Defense uh, Patrick Shanahan. He's a, for, a former Boeing executive, and he has taken on um, major roles in uh, program managing um, over cost programs such as the F-35, uh, establishing the Space Force um, and de the defense industrial base, the defense budget. Um, so he's someone that uh, I'm told Trump gets along with very well and there are none of these this ideological history that Matt Mattis may have with Trump. Other people that I'm hearing um, is David McCormick of Bridgewater Associates who runs in the same circles as uh, Ivanka and Jared Kushner do and he's also the, the fiance of Dina Powell. I'm also hearing uh, Dan Coates, 
um, could be a possibility as well, um, as well as Tom Cotton, who was actually one of Trump's top picks the first time around before he chose Mattis. And the last person I'm hearing that might be a bit of a surprise is Navy Secretary Richard Spencer, who is also a former businessman who uh, Trump also gets along with quite well. So it's all up in the air right now, uh, but there is a short list in the works, and I'm sure we'll be finding out in the next couple weeks. Laura Seligman with Foreign Policy. Laura, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.